Hello and welcome to the 5-2 Summer Ready podcast which accompanies my new ebook called 5-2 Summer Ready. I really hope you'll enjoy the podcast and especially the relaxing and inspiring meditation that's coming up later to help you stay on track. You might be able to hear the breeze and the sea because I'm actually sitting here on Brighton Beach on the south coast of England. I'm lucky enough to live not far from here and coming down here during the summer is as close to a daily routine as I can get. I've come down early this morning because it's the last week of May which means half term and I know later in the morning it's going to be pretty crazy especially as the sky is a fantastic blue, the sea a slightly more of a denim colour and the forecast is really good and during the day the whole beach is full of families and groups of friends having a day out or a holiday. It's lovely to look forward to the summer, but I know as well that many of us at this time of year become a lot more conscious of the shape we're in. Now we can no longer hide our bodies under the winter woolies. And that's why I've put the 5-2 Summer Ready ebook and this podcast together. I wanted to bring together the tips and ideas I've learned during three years of doing intermittent fasting and writing four books. So I've put delicious food ideas in it, a lot of my favourite recipes, tips on trying intermittent fasting for the first time, plus lots of booster ideas that will keep you in the best shape and the best health you've been and not just for the summer. Coming up in today's podcast I'm going to be talking about some beach boost ideas and these are designed to maximise the benefits of fasting. I will give my views on the current hot topic in the UK, what is a beach ready body anyway? I've got this great short meditation that I've designed to help you relax and also stay motivated. And finally, I will go on to talk a bit about how you can hold on to that summer feeling. As I said, I'm going to start off with my beach boost ideas. Now, in the ebook, I give you a top 10 of things you can do to help see great improvements as soon as possible. Because obviously, we all want to see the results of our work as soon as we can. If you're new to 5-2, don't forget there's a lot more online at the 5-2dietbook.com. If you add forward slash podcast to that, you can hear fantastically inspiring stories of other people who've tried this, lost lots and lots of weight, and many of them discovered a whole new direction in life, running, walking, doing Zumba, you name it. If you add forward slash podcast to that address, you will be able to see the show notes for this podcast as well, which will be all the links that you need to follow up on some of the information. So summer beach boost ideas. I'm going to pick my top three to talk about in a bit more detail. And the first one is meal timing. Now, this is an area that I hadn't thought about at all before I started intermittent fasting. And yet now it's one of my big strategies on fast days and non-fast days. There's increasing evidence that the longer a gap you leave between meals, the more benefit you may be doing your body because instead of having to cope with digestion and also produce insulin to help regulate your blood sugar, your body can get on with doing other things in between meals. On a fast day that's relevant because many of our Facebook members find it easier to save their calories, if you like, until lunchtime or an evening meal. If you've only got five or 600 calories to play with, which is what we recommend on a fast day, then it goes a lot further if you divide it into two or even just the one meal. And lots of us, for example, will wait for an evening meal and eat pretty normally with our partner or our family, which also makes you feel less like you're doing something they might comment on. And a lot of us have had strange reactions to begin with until we start losing the weight when the reactions become a lot more positive. Don't feel bad if you can't do this, and especially if you can't face it at first, but I was not the kind of person who thought I could not eat three meals and yet now I skip breakfast, I skip lunch quite often and even on a non-fasting day I use this meal timing strategy. There's a lot of interest in what people are calling time-restricted diets. You might have heard the number 16-8 and what that means is 16 hours of the day you're not eating, you are drinking lots of water and hot drinks, whatever you want, but you are restricting the time that you take meals to eight hours within that day, which doesn't sound very much until you realise that could mean brunch at 11 o'clock, say, and then an evening meal around 6.30 or 7. 
I've found this can work really well on non-fasting days. It means that you're not having the temptation to constantly nibble on snacks. You're just setting up a good regular routine. And I find now that I do tend to eat two meals a day rather than three. This is especially useful as well if you are going on holiday and you don't want to fast while you're out there. But you'd quite like to keep an eye on what you're eating. If you imagine staying in a hotel, these are my favourite kinds, that has a breakfast buffet. Often they'll be open to say 10.30, 11 o'clock. Eat a really, really good brunch. Lots of protein like eggs and things like that. Maybe some porridge or birch and muesli, that's my favourite. And then you probably won't feel the need to eat much again until the early evening. That might be sunset time. Eating again at 6.30, 7. You are still keeping an eye on what you're eating, but it certainly doesn't mean you feel deprived. And within that time, if you fancy an ice cream, I'd say go for it. So that is my boost number one. Take a look at the time you're eating as well as what you're eating. Number two, find your fitness passion. I have actually just sat down on the beach after doing a five kilometre run and it's only just seven o'clock in the morning. If you told me I would be doing this three years ago, I would have dismissed you as completely crazy, just as I would have missed you as crazy if you'd said I was going to write a series of health and diet books. But here I am and I have got the trainers on to prove it and the sports bra, very important there if you're a woman. I had a real problem with exercise at school. I'm pretty uncoordinated and I was very short-sighted so I could never see anyone throwing the ball at me in netball or hockey or whatever it might be. So I would tend to hide as far as I could at the back of things when it came to PE and especially running, couldn't do it at all. And for years that was a real problem. I would go to the gym and I would hate it but I also felt bad about the fact I wasn't doing exercise. Now I realise it is so personal and that's something that certainly in the old days, PE lessons, physical education didn't take into account. If you weren't good at team games then that that was that, you were really not of interest to anyone. Now I've realised that there are lots of options. I've got a few suggestions for you here. Number one would be Couch to 5k and that's what I've just completed myself. Couch to 5k is a programme that takes you from sitting on your couch, unable to run for more than 30 seconds at once, in fact I could manage less than that, all the way to being able to run five kilometres without stopping. And I've just recently completed that and it feels great. I tell you, it's a real sense of achievement. It takes you across that in eight weeks and that doesn't sound very long, but it really builds up fast. You'll be astonished at how quickly your fitness improves. There are many people in the 5.2 Facebook group who've done this too, and we've all used different apps and MP3 podcast downloads. The simplest and the cheapest, if you're in the UK, in fact it's free, is the NHS podcast. Super encouraging and some nice music, a bit bland, but to be honest, you're not really focusing on the best hits when you're running and sweating and panting, at least at first. My personal favourite is an app called Zombies Run, which puts you into the scenario of being one of the last human survivors of a zombie apocalypse. And it intersperses your own favourite music with a really cool storyline and the odd zombie chase. So if you're motivated by that kind of thing, you might enjoy it too. It certainly motivated me. The next option is fitness videos. Now, if you remember very early ones, the Jane Fonda workouts in the Lycra, they could be intimidating. And in some cases, they weren't all that well thought out. Might not be room in your living room. There are a range of them, though, that you can get now. And the brilliant thing about the YouTube age that we're living in is that you can watch them on YouTube first rather than splashing out on a DVD and finding that you really hate the presenter or the music. A lot of people in the 5G group really love the Gillian Michaels 30 Day Shred videos, the idea that you do a short workout every day for 30 days. Now, I tried them, and although I quite liked them, they were short and got it over with quite quickly, my knees really didn't like them one bit. But again, the good thing is you can watch them for free, and I'll include a link in the podcast show notes on the website. The range of videos you can get is just astonishing. So part of my tip when it comes to videos is if there is a song or a music artist that you really really like google them and work out and the chances are you will find specially choreographed numbers to help you get fit so that could be Beyonce it could be rap it could be doing the Charleston you might be one of these people who is always on the go and you like the idea of achieving achieving something while you're exercising so I would suggest looking up 
the various green gym schemes. Now, these include conservation schemes, tidying up schemes, where you can be improving your environment and improving your fitness at the same time. Get in contact with your council or conservation volunteers. It might be something as simple as gardening in your local park, but you'll have something to show for it as well as a more toned body. That is, find your fitness passion. Beach boost number three is a very simple one and this is something I would suggest perhaps just before you go on holiday and that is maybe stepping up from 5-2 to 4-3 and all that means is trying three fast days a week rather than two. This means that you will be increasing the calorie deficit, that's the shortfall between what you're eating and what your body actually needs and when that happens our body burns fat rather than looking for all the energy requirements through the food we're having and that means you lose weight. The downside to that is it can be a bit harder to schedule three fast days into a week especially because we don't recommend doing more than two back to back because a it can be difficult and b it may have some slight changes in terms of slowing down your metabolism so it's best avoided just on average but doing the three days a few weeks before you go on holiday can help give you more confidence and increase the weight loss and I also sometimes do it coming back from holiday I don't really like to watch things too closely while I'm away but it means I know that I will lose the weight a bit faster when I come back so those are some of the beach boost ideas as I say there are actually 10 of them in the ebook so if you're interested in what I've been talking about you might like to give that a look The next thing I want to talk about is the whole question of what is a beach body anyway? If you're in the UK, you might recently have seen a big controversy about adverts that featured a very toned and attractive woman looking challengingly to camera with the headline, Are You a Beach Body Ready? Now, these were shown in the London Underground and they attracted a lot of attention. They were an advert for protein shakes. I won't name them. We were talking a lot about fat shaming, about body shaming, about whether it's okay to promote being in shape in quite that direct away I suppose. I really wanted to think this through properly because I was writing this summer ready 5-2 book which is partly about feeling good in your bikini or your swimsuit whatever it is you want to wear and the last thing I wanted to do was to make feel people feel bad about themselves. I'm a great believer in feeling good and in health rather than quick fixes so I started reading around what people were saying and thinking well what do I think is a beach body? Now, the logical part of me thinks it is anybody who is going on the beach. We all want to look good, but we're also all entitled to feel the sun on our skin, to swim in the sea or dive into the pool when we're hot, and not to feel that we can't go out not wearing very much without some thick towel or robe to shield us from unkind eyes. However, I am, of course, promoting a regime that leads to weight loss. And my own weight loss of over two stone, that's about 15 kilograms, has really transformed how I feel about myself and my body. I'm still not quite ready for a bikini. I'm a funny shape for a bikini and I don't always feel 100% confident, but I certainly feel a lot better. And I know that isn't just about the weight loss. It's also about self-nurturing. I know that I am looking after my body a bit better. I'm doing the exercise. I am eating better food. I'm literally treading a little more lightly on the earth and I enjoy that feeling. So where do I ultimately stand on the whole beach body thing? Well, I would definitely stick to the idea that we have the right to be out there and proud in whatever we're wearing, feeling good about ourselves. But I believe that intermittent fasting is a strategy that can help you feel better and if you are overweight and unhappy about it, lose weight in the long term. It's time now for our guided meditation, which I've come back indoors to record so you won't be distracted by any sudden wind noise. I've recently become a fan of mindfulness and I've also used hypnotherapy tape successfully to reduce my fear of flying. We even went to Australia last year, so it definitely worked. I'm no guru, but I believe that with simple breathing techniques and a little time, we can use our imagination to help us feel more relaxed 
but also clearer about what we want, especially when it comes to our health. I've recorded this simple, relaxing meditation, which helps you focus on feeling great about yourself. It's good to help you visualise where you're going, or if you're struggling or stressed on a fast day, listen to this before breaking your fast. It will take around 10 minutes to listen to this meditation, but you'll feel very refreshed at the end of it. Obviously, because you're aiming for a state of relaxation, you should not use this meditation when you're in charge of machinery, when you're driving a car, or you otherwise need to be completely aware of your surroundings. Are you ready? Let's go. Find somewhere comfortable to sit or lie down where you're not going to be disturbed. The best is a chair that supports your back and head, or you can try this meditation in a quiet outdoor location. Sit now with your hands resting on your legs, palms down. Begin by taking some steady, slow breaths. Try to breathe right down to fill your lungs with air, then wait before breathing out again, both to the count of five. So, breathe in for one, two, three, four, five, and then breathe out, one, two, three, four, five, do the same again, breathe in, one, two, three, four, five, and out, one, two, three, four, five. Now look ahead of you, don't focus on anything in particular, just soften your focus and gaze ahead while you breathe in again. One, two, three, four, five, out. One, two, three, four, five. Now allow your eyelids to close softly. Remember you're completely safe. Breathe in. One, two, three, four, five, out. One, two, three, four, five. Now I want you to imagine you're in your favourite place. To relax in the summer. It might be on a sun lounger or the beach, in a hammock or in a shady summer garden. Perhaps it's on a blanket in a leafy park or by a private pool in the country that you love the best for going on holiday. If you know where you are now, then breathe in one, two, three, four, five, then out one, two, three, four, five. Now that you've chosen a place, let's begin to imagine all the details. First of all, think of the aromas. Perhaps you can smell coconut suntan oil, or fresh blooming tea roses, newly mown grass, or Mediterranean shrubs like rosemary and lavender that release their scent as you brush against them. Now think about the sounds you hear around you. It might be waves lapping against the beach, or the sound of birds singing. Perhaps you can hear children playing, or a busker strumming a guitar. Imagine those sounds as you breathe in, one, two, three, four, five, out, one, two, three, four, five. Your body is completely supported by the lounger, hammock, or the ground underneath you. Feel the texture of the fabric under your body and a delicious breeze, just enough to keep you cool in this summer warmth. Breathe in, one, two, three, four, five, and out, one, two, three, four, five. Imagine now you are completely comfortable with how you look because you've been taking all the right steps to be healthy and give your body what it needs. You've been drinking lots of lovely cool water and that means you're not thirsty despite the warm temperature. Breathe in. One, two, three, four, five. Out. One, two, three, four, five. You're not hungry and you're not experiencing any kind of cravings because you've been eating well. You enjoy treats, but you don't overdo it. You're responding to your appetite and you're enjoying anticipating your next meal when you're hungry, but you never feel the need to rush your food or to overeat. Breathe in, one, two, 
three, four, five, and out. One, two, three, four, five. Your body is responding well to getting what it needs. Not just great food, but also lots of daylight, sunshine, and time to simply be content. The results are you're sleeping better, yet as soon as you wake up, you have so much more energy. Breathe in, one, two, three, four, five, and out. One, two, three, four, five. As you lie in your special summer place, you're feeling good about yourself and the choices you're making. When you feel ready to get up, perhaps you're going to stretch out, take a walk, or go for a dip in the sea or the pool, you won't feel self-conscious. Instead, you'll be confident that you're doing everything you need to feel and look at your very best. You're ready for summer and for all the other seasons besides. Breathe in, one, two, three, four, five, and out. One, two, three, four, five. You're in the present now, not in the past where you've made mistakes or the future where any worries lie. You are relaxed, free of anxieties, ready to face the day. You are in the present, contented, confident, hopeful. Breathe in, one, two, three, four, five, and out, one, two, three, four, five. Enjoy a few last moments in your summer place. Remember, this is somewhere you can come back to again and again, whenever you like. The more you come here, the more real it will feel. With care and attention, you can hold on to these feelings of relaxation and confidence all day long. You're now going to come slowly back from your summer place. Breathe in, one, two, three, four, five, and out, one, two, three, four, five. You can feel your body in the chair, you can feel your feet on the floor, your hands on your legs. You can hear the sounds around you. You know exactly where you are and what you can do and the choices you can make to keep hold of these positive feelings. When you're ready, open your eyes. Breathe in, one, two, three, four, five, and out. One, two, three, four, five. Now stretch out your arms, your legs, and know that you have put yourself in the right place to enjoy and get the most of your day ahead. I really hope you enjoy the meditation and I would love to know if you found it useful because if you do, I will happily record some more. You can let me know via the 52 Diet website or you can also tweet me at the 52 Diet. My final section here is all about holding on to the summer feeling. Let's think beyond the summer because the positivity doesn't have to be limited to the sunny holiday months. In the ebook, I do give some ideas for holding on to those feelings and I thought I'd chat through a few of those in a little bit more detail. Number one tip for holding on to the summer feeling is actually to set yourself a new goal. I have definitely experienced in the past that slight slump when you get back from a holiday. What have I got to look forward to? And yet I also like the September back to school feeling. I find it exciting that we can go off and study something else, whether that's pottery or joining a choir or I've done all of those things and enjoyed them all. So have a look at your calendar for the rest of the year and think, is there an occasion that you want to look your best for? Maybe there's a charity fitness event you've always wanted to try and now you could train for it. Maybe you could even look ahead to Christmas, think about the dress you'd like to be wearing at all those social events and plan for being in the best shape you can be. Goals, I'm a great fan of goals. I like to look ahead and break things down. It's very difficult to imagine losing, say, a stone or seven kilos in weight in one go. 
just doesn't happen. It takes us as long to lose weight as it did to put it on, and it certainly creeps on gradually weight. So it's much easier to think in terms of small goals, losing a pound or two a week. And if you can keep that up, well, you'll have lost the weight that you want to lose within seven or eight weeks. So look at those goals. It might be a matter of weight loss, or it might just be fitness, or it might be trying something incredibly new and interesting that doesn't revolve around food i definitely recommend joining a choir that can make you feel fantastic trying a new hobby or even joining a cookery class where you can experiment with healthier options my summer feeling tip number two is chase the sunlight obviously inevitably as the autumn comes the days get shorter and your body misses the daylight so make a special effort to spend as much time as you can outdoors, especially at weekends or days off, because I know that for many of us who start work first thing in the morning and end work in the evening, the chances of seeing the daylight are very much reduced. Try setting up social occasions around being outdoors, so go for a walk with a friend with a cafe at the end of it instead of going straight into the cafe. Borrow a neighbour's dog or get one, I, I get a lot more sunlight now from owning a dog, and play fetch in the park or hire a bike and explore your local area, you will feel so much better for it. And that's partly because daylight has an effect on our circadian rhythms in the body. That's effectively our internal body clock. So if you get lots of daylight, you will sleep better and you will feel better. Your mood will be raised. My final tip is to eat seasonally because as the seasons change, the produce that there is available reflects that. So the vegetables and fruit that are available through autumn and winter tend to be more comforting and rich and yet they can still be eaten on fast days. A good example would be squash, something like pumpkin or butternut squash. Gorgeous colour and lots and lots of them available in the autumn. They are very low in calories and you can bake them or you can turn them into soup and they are a really lovely autumnal flavour. The other thing is blackberries, again, really rich in all the nutrients, really rich in lots of nutrients and a fantastic colour and a lovely intense taste and pretty low in calories too. One tip there as well, it can be hard to tell what's seasonal when our supermarkets stock produce from all over the world. So I really recommend signing up for a local vegetable box scheme from farmers near you. That means you're getting the best of what's available as close to home as possible. And it's having the shortest journey as well from the farm to your dining table. So that is the end of my summer podcast. Don't forget, as I say, there is a lot more about this in the new mini ebook, which is called 52 Summer Ready. It contains ideas from the other four books and also some of my favourite recipes from brunch dishes like Eggs Benefit. That's my version of Eggs Benedict. Very healthy. Vanilla granola pots with berry fruit compote. Mushrooms with goat's cheese and lemon pesto. That was inspired by a trip we made to Australia last year bit more substantial things like Thai prawn skewers, quinoa salad with feta and avocado, lamb kofta, basil baked salmon, vegetable tomato summer crumble and even an elderflower jelly which is a lovely dessert for summer. You can read a lot more information as well for free on our website the 5-2 dietbook.com. As I say if you add forward slash podcast to that you'll be able to read the show notes from today's podcast so that will explain where you can find information about Catch to 5k and eating seasonally you could also go to my personal website kate-harrison.com if you're after some summer reading because I don't just write diet books I also write fiction for adults and teenagers my current adult book is all about baking funnily enough as I live very close to the beach I've also written a thriller series called Soul Beach which is about Facebook for the dead so do take a look over at kate-harrison.com if that's of interest thanks so much for listening and whatever you're doing and wherever you are I hope you have a fantastic summer